Hey, I love video games, but I can't always afford them. New games these days are like $50 or $60 a piece, so I have to go to the bargain bins a lot. But how do you know which games are in the bargain bin for a good reason and which ones just slip through the cracks? Well, that's why I'm here. Welcome to $5 Gaming. When you think of $5 games, you usually imagine NES cartridges sitting in the back of a thrift store somewhere. But really, there are a lot of last-gen games that can be found for this price tag. For example, Evergrace. Now, I know what you're thinking. What the hell is Evergrace? Well, short answer, it's a game I found for $3 at a trading store. Really though, it's an action RPG that came out very early in the PS2's lifespan. So early, in fact, that it reached America before the PS2 did. But what is the game actually like? Well, take Castlevania 64, force the player to finish the game with both characters, dumb down all the enemies, and add a brat's dress-up feature. Evergrace is kind of like that. But hey, don't take my word for it. Let's start playing. Is that a MIDI synthesized voice? Uh, not that I'd be surprised if it was. I mean, could you imagine someone trying to record the vocals for this? Okay, Evergrace intro music. Vocal track, take one, whenever you're ready. How was that? Okay, that was good, that was good, but I want to try it again, and this time I would like to see if you could dry heave into the microphone a little more. Unfortunately, most of the game's music is like this. 30 seconds long, if that, loops endlessly, and makes the emergency broadcast system sound like the London Symphony Orchestra. Actually, before we go any further, let's talk about what the game did right. Can I get a timer for this, please? Thank you. There's no leveling system, so there is no grinding for experience in this game. That's left to upgradable weapons and armor, which can be customized by having its color changed. The ability to swap between main characters is also a nice touch, and the equipment interface is fairly simple to use. Oh, well, that didn't take long. Now for everything else. I'm honestly not sure where to begin, but let's start with the story. Darius and Charlene wake up in the forgotten land of Rubain, which is supposedly sealed off from the outside world. The two of them are from a far-off village called Solta, where people are born with crests on their bodies, which are supposedly cursed. Darius hides his mark, but you would never know that from the way that it's clearly visible on his right hand. Even the NPCs in the game will notice it almost right away. Hey Darius, the sickly old man can see your crest from over 30 feet away. You might want to try hiding it a little better. The idea is to get home by defeating the demon, seriously, it's just called the demon most of the game, and an older than dirt magician named Morpheus. No, 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 wrong Morpheus, get Lawrence Fishburne's head out of the way. Ah, put it back, put it back! There's much more story to the game, except that the cutscenes and dialogue do such a poor job of advancing the plot that it almost becomes non-existent. At least that would be the case if the loading screens weren't there to vomit exposition every time there's a scene change. Let me put it this way. Spoonie One reviewed a game called Microcosm, which had an instruction book filled with page after page of story background that added nothing to the game and wasn't brought up during gameplay. These loading screens are the second cousins to the Microcosm instruction book. But what the game may lack in plot, it makes up for by creating time paradoxes out the ass. This is where being able to switch characters really screws up the game, because Darius and Charlene explore many of the same areas and certain things are quite obviously out of place. For example, Darius starts the game by grabbing a sword from an unmarked grave. When Charlene eventually finds the same place, the sword is still there. She then leaves the area and an obelisk collapses to block the path, but with Darius, this path is blocked the entire time. Or how about Charlene's exploring Rubain the entire time that she is supposedly being held captive by Morpheus? Or how about the last cutscene for Charlene, which shows her confronting Morpheus and a demon breaking loose? 
But when Darius arrives, Morpheus is fine, Charlene is in prison, and the same demon doesn't show up out of her cell until after a boss fight. Or how about Sienna being captured at the beginning of Charlene's story and clearly locked up the whole time when she later appears to guide Darius out of a collapsing castle? Certain in-game dialogue and events suggest that Charlene went through all of these places before Darius did. But if that was the case, two questions arise. One, why would you leave in the option to play as Darius first to create all this confusion? And two, if Charlene just gets captured in the end, why do we even need to play through her scenario? In short, when your own Wikipedia article on a nine-year-old game gives up on explaining the plot less than halfway through one character's story arc in a story-driven genre, you've got problems. Now I don't usually focus on graphics much unless it affects the gameplay, and Evergrace is one such game where this becomes a problem. Aside from the lag that appears at random or entire things just disappearing for no reason, many of the levels are so bland and monotonous that it's way too easy to get lost, even in the smallest of areas, partially because the only map in the game is the size of a quarter and doesn't show more than 20 feet beyond the character. But that's not the worst of it. Watch the screen for this cutscene. Do you notice how it jitters slightly up and down? I thought this was my recording equipment acting up, but no! The screen shakes like this during cutscenes, and at times in the shop. This may not seem like a big deal on a small video screen for about 30 seconds, but for cutscenes that are 3 to 5 minutes long on a full-size TV, this becomes headache-inducing. That's right, Evergrace's cutscenes are literally painful to watch. And listen to. I... I can't remember. What? Please, wait here a second. Yes! The crest! Run! Is Morpheus the demon? Stop. Morpheus, what are you doing? Trandon! Trandon! It's okay. I'll help you. Just hang on a second. Feel the end. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Zoom out, for the love of God! Oh, but I've just been dancing around the one big issue with this game. Let's talk about the gameplay. Alright, Evergrace. This is going to hurt me a lot more than it'll hurt you. Except for the part where it's going to hurt you a hell of a lot more than it hurts me.